Hello and welcome to the November 1st online worship service for West Des Moines United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Wilson and I'm really glad you took the time to join us for this worship service today. Please take a look at the link, our weekly publication for everything that's going on in the life of our church. And within the link, as always, are our cares, prayers, and joys. Please especially keep Gary Norton and his family in your prayers this week. And also today, Sunday, November 1st, our church will be having a prayer service at 2 p.m. And we will be ringing the bell for all of the folks who have died this year who are part of our congregation. Please join us for that today at 2 p.m. if you can. Thank you once again for joining us for this worship service. I pray that we all feel God's presence with us during this time. Welcome to church here at West Des Moines United Methodist Church. We're glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. This is All Saints Day Sunday, a time when we remember our loved ones who've gone before us. Um, and so we're going to lift them up on our hearts today. Um, and so I hope that you found yourself in a place where you can worship comfortably this morning, right? Maybe um, you're able to kick off your shoes to grab a mug of coffee um, and just focus your heart and your mind on God this morning. That's why we're here, to see what God would have for us this day so that we can go out um, and be disciples in this world. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your love. We give you thanks for all the goodness in our life. And we give you thanks that the, the darker stuff, the harder stuff, God, that you are a God who can take that and use it to bring goodness and glory into the world. So we hand over all that we are, all that we have, all that we hold on to. We hand it over to you, O oh God. Take us and redeem us to be your people in this world. And we are here seeking you this morning, God. We give you thanks. Oh. 
Alice, and I'm here to spend some time with you this morning. Today's a special church Sunday in our church. It's not like Easter, not like Christmas, but it's still important. It's called All Saints Day. Does anyone know what a saint is? If you guys were all here, we could discuss it, but since you're not, I'll just throw out some answers. A saint is someone that's gone before us that has done good things for God. And by doing good things for God, they did good things maybe for you. Saints aren't superheroes. They don't wear a cape. They're just ordinary people like you and I. And the way we can show God's love to others like they did is maybe your mom needs help making a cape. Maybe your sister wants to play with your body. Whoops, you'll share it. Maybe your brother wants a piece of your gum, and you'll give him a piece. Or maybe your grandma or grandpa just wants you to hug them and love them, so you'll give them their love. Those are all ways, and there's many more ways you can show God's love. If you want to, you can type in some of the ways on the comment line, and then we'll read those. All right, let's say a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for the saints that have gone before us. Help us to be like those saints and do good things for others. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, the New Revised Standard Version. The coming of the Lord. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we have fallen back this day, right? This is a daylight saving time. So, the good news uh, is that you're likely not to show up to church at the wrong time on this Sunday. Uh, and since that this is recorded, you'll be able to watch this at any point um, in your day. So enjoy that uh, daylight savings time for this morning. And so we uh, experience this falling back together, um, right? We uh, get this extra hour of sleep. We enjoy uh, get to enjoy that a little bit. Well, that is, you know, if you don't have children, young children who aren't accustomed to to waking up at different times twice a year, right? Uh, you know, or unless it is you've got dogs who like to pounce at you at 4.30 in the morning to make sure that they can go outside to the bathroom. Uh, and so now that's 3.30 that they're pouncing on you, right? Uh, and maybe you're just someone who has this internal clock that... Uh, doesn't match whatever the digital time may actually be. So maybe you're just up extra early this morning. So we're glad that you're here with us, uh, regardless of what it is. Uh, <clears throat> and we have this like weird tension of like joy and, uh, and not, because per perhaps you got an extra hour of sleep this day. But on the other hand, uh, these dark mornings are here for a while, right? Uh, these, these days aren't getting any brighter. Daylight hours continue 
to shorten and it might feel kind of gloomy with not as much sunlight. You know, maybe you get the kids off to school or you get up yourself and you go to work. Uh, and if you don't have a window at your office uh, where you can see outside into the world, maybe by the time you get home or you're leaving for the day, the sun has already gone down. It can feel a little bit gloomy at times. The good news is that Christmas lights are coming, right? Christmas lights are coming. Uh, this is November 1st, and in the Vaughn household, this is the day the Christmas tree goes up, right? This is that day. And I know some of you, like you have different rules in your house. You might have to wait until the day after Thanksgiving, which is not a bad tradition. You may wait until the first Sunday of Advent. Um, you may wait till December 1. But today... Christmas trees and Christmas lights are going up at the Vaughn household, and we're pretty excited. Um, you know, and as a pastor, maybe theologically, I should like wait and, you know, experience Advent. I totally get those things, uh, but I just have so much joy for the season, and I am excited. Plus, there's this like other temptation in the world to turn them on. Like, the world is tough right now. Um, at minimum, the world is a little different for us. And so why not turn on something that brings you joy? Why not um, dive in now to some of the goodness that surrounds you? Because some of the other things that are hard at this time is the cold, right? It can be hard, although I'm somebody who loves cold. Um, I prefer it to be hoodie season all year long. Um, but the cold can be hard on our joints and on our bones. Um, it can be hard on our mental state. Right? This time of year as we begin to work towards the holiday, often there's some memories that aren't so great. Right, We remember actually the loved ones we had um, who aren't with us this day, this year, this ho these holidays. Um, and so we have to like navigate all of that work together. And at the same time, we're even wondering, will we have normal holidays? What will this season look like that's usually about kind of slowing down and getting into a rhythm of being home more and being with your loved ones? Like, what, what will all of this look like for us this year? We don't know what to do when transitions are tough. And so we're talking about that this morning, and we're going to take these things to God. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the goodness and the love in our lives. We give you thanks that even though times are difficult, even though there are difficult, hard, chaotic things in our world, you're a God who wants to take those things and still make good come from them. So we ask that you take all of these things, the good and the hard, and redeem them for your love, for your glory that our stories are a part of your stories and we need your help, God, to, to tie those things together, to connect, to be lights and goodness into this world. And we pray that all of our minds, our, our meditations together, that they might be holy and pleasing to you that today, this day, oh God. Amen. Amen. So we have these transitions, okay? We have these transitions between seasons that are happening, right? Which means there's a transition between climate that's happening, uh, holidays that are coming. Uh, and sometimes these transitions leave us in the dark wondering what's next. Uh, and we're not the only ones, right? In this scripture reading from today, uh, the Thessalonian text, Paul offers words of comfort and power to a community. Uh, the Thessalonian community that has also have found itself in changing circumstances. Uh, they found themselves in dark, sad times, and they're wondering themselves, what is next? What is next? And it's a question really throughout all of 2020 we've been wondering, like, okay, what's next? And we say that with a lot of skepticism, like murder hornets, right? Derecho, squall, what's next? What do you have to throw at us next, world? Uh, and we assume that it's not good. And so many folks have just written 2020 off altogether, praying that whatever is next in 2021 might just be good. 
right? That maybe there's something out there that will save us. And so even today, we find ourselves, right? We're heels on the election here, finding ourselves maybe pouring into other things, looking for hope that, you know, if our candidate wins, then maybe there is goodness and hope. Although we really know that there's a, a, a false hope in that, right? And voting is good and get out and, and you know, vote for who's going to make um, the biggest difference in the world that uh, you want to see it as. But let's not have our hopes in things that are temporary, that things that really can't provide what we're looking for. And yet, at the same time, uh, let us not lose hope altogether. Let's say your, your candidate doesn't win. Let's do not lose hope altogether. Um, and it's easy to do when it seems like the world's constantly failing. But we look at these transitions of what's next, right? What's the hard stuff that gets thrown us at us and, and how do we move forward in that? Because even while what's next might not be what we were hoping for, I really believe there's some goodness that can come out of it. And what a better day to think about this than All Saints. This is All Saints Sunday. We remember the saints who've gone before us, the loved ones in our families and our communities and our churches who have died, right? And we, we think about them and their stories and their legacies and how the, who they were impacts who we are, right? The transition from um, life to death. Of, of the transition from having somebody with us to no longer having them in our lives. These are difficult transitions. They are hard and grief is real and it can shut us down for long periods of time. But also, if we're able to navigate this tension of grieving and looking for the goodness, I believe we can uh, kind of navigate these journey, this journey of transition together in an easier way. And so I want us to focus on All Saints on transitions um, and, and how to make these things good this morning. So in the scripture reading, Paul, um, he's proclaiming Jesus' resurrection. Uh, he's talking about Jesus' promise of eternal life. Uh, and these things are being tested right now in this community um, in Thessalonica. There is this simple human reality that has happened. People are dying, right? And at this time, it's important that Paul and the Thessalonians and the early Christians, they thought when Jesus resurrected from the dead and ascended to heaven and he said, I'll be back, they thought like any day, right? Like maybe today, maybe tonight. Um, they definitely thought that before they died, Christ would return. And so they're facing uh, human reality of death. People are dying in their community. And they're like, huh? This doesn't make sense with the message we've received. Uh, and they're confused, rightly so. You know, now we've got 2,000 years on them, so we know that when Jesus said, coming back, doesn't mean Jesus said, hey, I'm coming right back. But, so they're confused, and we have to look and see what's going on. Um, as members of the body of Christ, as Christian disciples are dying, whether it's illness or accident or persecution or simply old age, um, Jesus hasn't returned, and people are dying, and what does this mean? In this wrestling, and I imagine Paul, uh, who wrote this book, also uh, is wrestling with what does this mean? Uh, he admonishes this community this church community, he says, do not grieve as others who do not have hope. Do not grieve as others who do not have hope. And like their hope is confusing right now. It's being tested. Um, but Paul says there's still reason to hope. And this gets us into like eschatology, like the study of the end times, of the end of the world. What happens after you die? And like, uh, as a pastor who's been studying scripture, it's not as clear as we, we like to think it is, right? This eternal life that Jesus talks about really talks about a life that begins now, that continues on forever. So it's not just about what happens after you die, but what is happening now as well. We hear a lot in scripture about new creation, about God making all things new, about us being born again and becoming new creations ourselves. Like there's this weird tension of all of this together of what is the now and what is to come. 
In the centuries since Paul's writing, uh, the church has been obsessed with how and when of this moment of the end time, right? Of when Christ returns, does that mean it's the end of time as we know it? Um, and and they, the church has just been obsessed with this concept. And so this thing called the rapture has emerged. And it, it comes from these scripture readings today. And this uh, understanding of the rapture, this like popular Christian culture almost understanding of the rapture is that Christ will come down and the people will leave the earth um, and those who don't know Christ will be left behind. Um, that's really not what's happening in this scripture, but that's what has become of this scripture. See, Paul was much more concerned with the who um, and that who for Paul was ever expanding, extending, enduring body of Christ on earth, on earth, which was never separated from those who have gone on before. And so what we see in this scripture is a difference between the people who have died um, and the people who are alive. And they're wanting to know, okay, if you have died before Christ has returned, what is your fate? And Paul says... Um, that we will be caught up together. And this idea of being caught up um, is, is very interesting because this idea of caught up at one point in the world meant, in early in their time, meant that you would grieve so hard for someone that they were caught up and like not able to go on to what was next, right? Their soul was stuck in limbo because uh, those who were left were holding on so tightly and not able to let them go. And like we get that as people who grieve for people we love and we've lost. We get not being able to let folks go. And instead of the, the dead being the ones who are caught up, Christ, or Paul says we are the ones who are being caught up. We're the ones who aren't being let go of. The Greek word for caught up that Paul uses, it's not an abduction, right? We're not getting abducted and taken somewhere, but instead it's an induction. Paul uh, uses this word not to assure people that Jesus is going to swoop down and rescue them, right? But to reassure people that Jesus would connect those who remain alive to those who have died. No one's getting left behind in any way. And that's important because since 1995, the word rapture has been associated with this like left behind series uh, books, popular Christian culture books that maybe you've heard of them. Uh, there's like over 65 million books sold. I remember reading these books in high school um, and the books sold this idea of rapture sold because when people who are faced with an unknown and perilous, potentially perilous future, um, we read these texts to vindicate that God will spare us, that if we, we will be spared. And as United Methodists, this is not a theological stance that we fall into, right? We don't believe in a rapture that leaves people behind. We're about living in love toward God and toward neighbor. Remembering provenient grace means that God goes before all of us, that we're all included in the story of God's redemption and love and grace. And this uh, biblical understanding of rapture, it's not something that takes us out of the world, right? Jesus instead and Paul talk about something that takes us into the world, right? With new excitement and hope. And, and so rapture is not reserved for the end times, even though 2020 is difficult and maybe you're like, get me the heck out of here. Um, this is not that message, right? This message says, guess what? 2020 is rough. You're called to be here. Let me rapture you into this world, into the time. Be inducted into what's going on and see your place and how to bring creation in. Rapture is not reserved for the end times. Paul's discussion of the rising saints were an ongoing experience about building up this body of Christ. These people who have gone before us are not separate Right, but they're integrated into the body, Christ, the body of Christ. All of us, the living and the dead, into the body, the saints and the living, into this body of Christ. See, the rapture doesn't like end the church's mission. Thank God we were saved from the bad. 
It doesn't take us out of this world. No, it enlarges the church's mission, right? It brings us into the world in deeper and higher levels of strength and service and hope and joy and presence. And this is our role to get caught up in this world, in this eternal life, this eternal life that Christ talks about that has already started in your new creation, in my new creation. And Paul concludes uh, with this little passage here. In verse 18, it reinforces the connection to the deceased. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Right? Comfort one another. We're still connected together. And that not only still now connected, but that we will. Like, there is still yet hope in what is to come. Right? This is not the end. Eternity has begun, yet there is still more to come. Christ is still making all things new. And November days can seem particularly dreary because all the things we love about fall can be swept away by the first wintry storms, right? We've had snow already. And the mornings have been cold, pretty cold already. The bright and beautiful colors that we gazed on are soon to become a slippery, sodden, mud-colored mass under our feet. But those mushy, fallen leaves, they're not a sign of a tree's failure. No, they're promise of trees' continued growth in the future. A tree... It's only as healthy as the richest, richness of the soil in which it has its roots. Right? I want to say that again. A tree is only as healthy as the richness of the soil in which it has its roots. Our saints are our soil. Right? They are fallen leaves. The loved ones who have gone before us. They are the fallen leaves that still enrich us. Fallen leaves decompose. They add a rich resource of nutrients to the ground as they're shed from their tree, right? New study. So for those of you who are like, oh, the snow, I'm not going to be able to rake the leaves. They actually say leaving the leaves is so good for your soil. So I'm using that as an excuse not to rake up all my leaves this year. But a nutrient-rich leaf falls to the ground and still continues to feed the tree from which it sprouted. The fallen leaf makes possible new leaves that will emerge from an even larger tree come spring, helping that tree reach its full stature. Right? Like it, that tree is still growing. It's still creating. It's still being made new. It's not reached its full stature yet. Christ's body, right? this idea of the body of Christ, it's not rooted in one place, one culture, one ethnic heritage. It's not one face. With every new generation of followers, with every new incarnation of Christ into a culture, there's a fresh revelation of Jesus Christ. As every person and culture in the world is welcomed into this body, as every new generation is grown and grafted onto the body, as every leaf falls and creates an environment, a soil in which new leaves can come, the body of Christ grows in stature. And Christ's presence is more embodied. And that is our goal in 2020, right? That is our goal this year, to remain connected to this body, to be a part of the soil that produces richness, to not forget, to grieve, to grieve well about the loss, right? But not to get caught up in a lack of presence now, knowing that we're still connected with our loved ones, knowing that there is a few, there's the now, which is a part of the future that's to come. Right? knowing that we are still embodied people. And so as we wait for Jesus to come again, right? and we say these words when we take communion, right? Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Uh, we don't have the, this uh, hope that 
uh, the first century Christians here had that Christ is going to come back before we fall to sleep. Like that's not what we're holding on to, right? But we're holding on to Christ that will come again. And as we wait and as we like fully encounter this, we let Jesus rapture us for the world, right? Not out of the world, but for the world. A world that right now is rough, but it's a world that God still loves, a world that goodness is in, a world that's still being redeemed and creation is still happening and all things are still being made new. And it's an eternal life that begins now. So may you be embodied this week. May you know that Christ has started something new in you and is continuing that new work, not calling you out of this world, but into this world to be you. Amen. This morning is All Saints Sunday, and if you're new to the Methodist Church or new to church in general, this may be something new to you. We take one day out of the year when we stop and pause and we remember people who've been important in our lives and who have died. I think it's one of the bravest things we do in the church to kind of look in the face of death and to declare that God is greater than death, that the persons who've died, that they still live on in us, um, in our lives, in the love that they shared with us, and also that we trust that God has received them in heaven, that they now rest in God's arms. In the United Methodist Church, you don't have to be somebody special to be a saint. All you have to do is to love God as best you can and to love neighbor in the way that you care for yourself. Um, that's kind of it. And we know that doing that, loving God and loving others, that that sets an example, that that makes a difference in our lives. So today, we take time and we pause, and we're going to remember some persons who've been a part of our church. Either they've been members of the church, or Pastor Trevor or, or I have conducted their funerals. Somehow, somehow, our church has been a part of their life and their death. And so today, we remember them. Each one of these candles represents one of those persons. This all um, are all people who, in the last year, have been a part of our church. Grief doesn't have... Um, uh, a time's up. Grief goes on. And so there'll be a time in the prayer that I offer today when you can think of those people who've made a difference in your life, need not have been in the last year, but any time that have made a difference and, and contributed to making you who you are. Um, people who have shared the love of God with you. So will you join me in this time of prayer? We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you whether in gardens or cathedrals, wooden churches or cement meeting houses. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands or hands stained with grease or oil, strong hands and hands gnarled with age, holy hands. We, give you, we thank you, God, for hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suited, they left their mark for you, for us, for our children to come. Thank you for the sacrifices made by those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints. May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love. We place them before you name by name, knowing that these names are holy these are the persons who have been part of this church and who have died in the last year. Bev McGrath, John Melberg, Ruth Slycord, John DeVries, Dick Cummings, Al Kreese, Matt Leidens, Mary Lou Strain, Marie Adair, Helen Nicholson, Max Bowman, Bob Smith, Janet Spiker, Paul Burnett, Ron Branham, Tom Roach, Russell Dent, Floyd Sanders, Irene Norton, Becky Daniels, 
Ramona Campbell, Michael Logston, Beverly Olson, John Wandry, Mike Kranovich, Gary King, Dwayne Ahrens, Susan Stainbrook, Muriel Folks, Mary McLean, and Kay Strauss. Lord, there are more people. Love and grief do not expire after a year. And so, Lord, in the silence of my voice, the people worshiping today lift up the names of people who've been saints in their life, people who have loved us and shared life with us and died and now rest in you for all eternity. Lord, hear the prayers of the hearts of the people. Faithful Redeemer, you are the beginning and ending of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear, that death and mourning will be no more. You make your home among us and abide with us as our God. Teach us to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may truly be your people, living and doing your will. Together, Lord, we offer the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This afternoon at 2 p.m. here at our church, weather permitting, we'll ring the bell and we'll be reminded of these saints, these persons who made such a difference in our lives. If you're able to come by and watch, I encourage you to. But know this, these people have been a gift to us. God's gift that these persons would be in our lives and make such a difference. Living and loving together, that's what makes life possible. In Christ's name, amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table, all those who love him, all those who seek after him, those who earnestly repent of our sin the way we fall short, those who seek to live in peace with one another. You are those who are invited to this table. And this table of Holy Communion, it doesn't belong to the United Methodist Church. It doesn't belong to West Des Moines United Methodist Church. This is God's table. All are invited to God's table. Therefore, let us confess the ways we fall short before God and, and one another. And so I'm going to put on the screen words that I invite you to say along with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll hear the good news. While, Christ, while we were yet sinners, why even when we still fell short, Christ came. Christ lived for us. Christ died for us. This proves God's, God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. While the Lord be with you, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
because it is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and with all of our saints in heaven, we praise your holy name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, to us. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And so we remember on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat from this. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. This is the cup of life. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it's in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices. As we, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here near and far across digital spaces, God. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. On the gifts that are in front of us, wherever we are of the bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world. The body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at God's heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we have prepared our hearts. We have given thanks to God for this meal. We have recalled the story in which we play part. And now I invite you, whether you are alone or with others, to take the bread. Rip off a piece. And know that this is the body of Christ broken for you. To dip in the cup, the cup of salvation that is offered to you. Thanks be to God. May you go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
with us this morning. And so as we uh, wrap up this worship service, I want to invite you in what's to come. Starting next Sunday, we are in this new series, um, this new series that is about building bridges, right? There's so much division in our world and we want to build these bridges. And part of this uh, division comes from not understanding one another. Uh, and so uh, in, to end this for our blessing, there's a, a little bit of this uh, kind of the last chapter of this book called Boomer Spirituality that I want to share with you. I think we need to understand each other better, right? I'm a millennial, but like barely on that age of millennial. Um, and there is a lot of like weird tension between the boomer generation and the millennial generation, but we're all in this together. And we need to see each other and value each other and not talk about the ways in which the other people aren't good, right? But to dive into what is good. And so uh, this uh, is a wonderful way to end even this All Saints Sunday says it's not enough to just wander through life on a yellow brick road that leads us nowhere. Instead, each of us must be challenged to look anew at life and ask, what is my legacy? Each of us must be challenged to willingly inquire, God, what are you calling me to be? And so I thank you to the generations who've come before us, those who have been a part of my history, their legacies who have played into my world. Um, I thank you. I thank you for what you've done, that I might be uh, this leaf that can be eventually a legacy and a soil for new leaves to rise. We all have our part to play in creating this new creation. So to whatever part you've played, thank you. Receive this blessing. May God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer be with you now 
this day and forevermore.